in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning to you all. And a very warm welcome to you to our celebration of Mass today. We have a lovely gospel this morning. It's a meditation, really, on Jesus Christ. So to prepare ourselves to hear the word of God, let us call to mind that we are sinners. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and light of the eternal Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you so that we might be truly children of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, splendor of faithful souls, graciously be pleased to fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all peoples by the gracious radiance of your light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Wisdom speaks of her own praises in the midst of her people she glories in herself. She opens her mouth in the assembly of the Most High. She glories in herself in the presence of the Mighty One. Then the Creator of all things instructed me, and He who created me fixed a place for my tent. He said, Pitch your tent in Jacob, make Israel your inheritance. From eternity, in the beginning, he created me, and for eternity I shall remain. I ministered before him in the holy tabernacle, and thus I was established on Zion. In the beloved city he has given me rest, and in Jerusalem I wield my authority. I have taken root in a privileged people, in the Lord's property, in his inheritance. The word of the Lord. The word was made flesh and lived among us. The word was made flesh and lived among us. Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. The word was made flesh and lived among us. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with the finest wheat. He sends out his words to the earth and swiftly runs his command. The word was made flesh and lived among us. He makes his words known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. The word was made flesh and lived among us.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. That will explain why I, having once heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love that you show towards all the saints, have never failed to remember you in my prayers and to thank God for you. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind, so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, O Christ, who claimed to the pagans. Glory be to you, O Christ, believed in by the word. Hallelujah. reflect enough for a few moments on this 
lovely meditation that St. John has given us this morning. In order to do that, we just uh, begin with the words that are so central to that reflection from St. John. The Word was made flesh and he lived among us. Now, just for a few moments in, in a little silence, just take those words to heart. He became flesh and he lives among us. So he's here with us. And I want you this morning, all of you, to experience him. Uh, that's what's uh, kind of important for us when we come to celebrate any Mass. But, so to celebrate, but to, uh, it's important for us in our lives, our daily lives as well. So just a, a moment's silence. St. John, writing his Gospel, probably maybe 100 years after the birth of Christ, he's reflecting with his community, because John had a community, and John had only one old saying, and it was, love one another, love one another. He kept saying that to his disciples every morning when he came down to breakfast. He said, love one another. And so he's reflecting this morning with those disciples on birth of Jesus. And for St. John, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He became among us. But for John, Jesus existed from all eternity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And he was with God in the beginning. So that's the first thing that John reflects on. Jesus existed for all time with God. And then he uh, reflected that not alone that, but everything that was created, the whole universe, all the worlds, our own world, all creation, was created through him and for him and in him. So everything gives glory to God, because you can't be in Jesus and not give glory to God. One of the difficulties that the early church had was that John the Baptist came before him. And a lot of people thought that because John the Baptist came before him, that John was more important than Jesus. He was, he was the first. But St. John makes it very clear that John was not the light. John was a witness for the light. And many people are unconsciously, maybe consciously as well, are followers of John the Baptist. If you find yourself trying to have what I like to call muscular Christianity, you're a follower of John the Baptist. If you're trying to do it by your own will and your own power, you're a follower of John the Baptist. Because John was very much into keeping the law and he found the teaching that Jesus was bringing, he found that very difficult. Uh, St. John tells us, he was not the light, he was only a witness of the light. The Word was the true light that enlightens all people. The Word for John was, the, was, was Jesus. He is the Word of God. He was in the world that had its being through him. And yet, the world did not accept him. It's sometimes very really hard to accept those who are closest to you. The world did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, this is where we have to kind of surrender to him. To all who did accept him, he gave the power to become children of God. So to be a follower of Christ, it's God, it's the grace of God that does it for us. He was born, John, St. John tells us, not out of human stock of the word of the, the orchard of the flesh, of the will of man, but of God himself. The 
Word was made flesh and lived among us. And we saw his glory, the glory that is his as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. That privilege is also ours, to see the glory of God and the face of Jesus. And then in case we had forgotten, John appears as his witness. He proclaims, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me, ranks before me. Because he existed before me. And then, indeed from his fullness we have all of us received. Yes, grace in return for grace. Since though the law was given through Moses, most of our Christianity was given through Moses, Grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is nearest to the Father's heart who has made him known. So Jesus is constantly making the Father known to you and to me. And that's a gift from God. You can't do it yourself. All you have to do is to say, Yes, remember Mary? Yes, she said yes. And that was the key to the whole incarnation. Yes, yes Lord. Your word was made flesh and lived among us. Let us take a little moment in silence this morning now, just to be with that Christ, to be with that God who is with us, who is near us to the Father's heart, and who is one of us. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning that through the intercession of St. John that you will touch our lives. Thank you for this opportunity to be together so that we may experience your presence here at Mass and in each other. We ask you to bless all our brothers and sisters because of them you are human and we see your face. You gave the power for us to become children of God. Lord, we accept that power this morning. We accept you as our Lord our Saviour and our Lover. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer some bidding prayers. We pray for the church throughout the world and for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray that the church may always proclaim Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are suffering from the virus. We pray for doctors and nurses 
and for carers. We pray for those who are administering the vaccines. We ask God to bless them and that the vaccines may bring healing, the healing of God. Lord, in your mercy, we pray today for those who are unemployed, for those who have lost their jobs as a result of, as a result of the virus. We pray for them and for their families. Be sensitive to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died. We ask God to grant them eternal rest. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for schools, for universities, we pray for teachers, lecturers, we pray for children and for parents. Lord, in your mercy, we ask our Blessed Lady, Mother of the World, to help us to say yes. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Take a moment to pray for our own particular needs, and particularly our families today. Heavenly Father, we bring you all our needs and we bring you the needs that we carry in our hearts for which we have no words or can't express them. But you know them and we ask you to hear and grant them all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Okay. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O oh Lord, the offerings we make on the nativity of your only begotten Son. For, if, uh, for by it you show us the new gift of way of love, uh, you show us the new way of truth, and promise the life of heaven of the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather all men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Therefore now and for ages of ending, with all the angels and saints, Together we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. 
holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh God, you are indeed holy and to be glorified. You love the human race and all creation. And you always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son who is present here in our midst when we are gathered together by his love. And when as once for his disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mary, Mother of God, with 
the apostles, the martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, who is your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a wave of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The Word was made flesh and he lives among us. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the my roof, but only say the word, for my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. To all who would accept him, he gave the power to become children of God. My Jesus, I believe that you are really and truly present in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you sacramentally but I am unable to do so at this time. Come at least spiritually now into my heart. I accept you and embrace you, and I unite myself wholly with you. Never permit me to be separated from you through Christ our Lord. of this mystery, 
our offences may be cleansed and our just desires fulfilled. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of quick announcements before you go. Uh, thank you for being here this morning, for your presence. It's been lovely to see you, to see you all. And those who are following us on the street, it's lovely to have you as well. Um, Wednesday is a holy day of obligation, if that's what they still call it. Anyhow, it's the Feast of the Epiphany, and Mass on that morning will be at half past nine. Um, the, the, I wrote the idea for Holy Communion today will be the same as it was last Sunday, or whenever you were here last. One of the um, people at the back of the church will come and invite you to come to Holy Communion, and you go around and come out this way. And then I hope you have a good week and stay safe. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory peace and the Lord. Thanks be to God.